So what is what is iceberg? All right, there's a lot of conversations around open table formats and um, Apache Iceberg has come up over and over again in, in conversations with our customers. When you look at social media and LinkedIn and blog posts, you probably see a lot of it these days. So what is it? What is actual Apache Iceberg? So if you kind of look at their, their website, you know, you'll probably see this, this sentence up top. So an open standard for creating, updating, and optimizing large analytics tables on object stores. Now, commonly it's on object stores because that's kind of where the large scale analytics is but it does run on HDFS. It does work on-prem uh, if that's the environment that you're using. But it's really intended to make it easy for you to create and update and modify these large data sets on top of some kind of object store that traditionally didn't give you the option to update, right? In a database, it's easy to, to make changes, but in an object store like S3, you really can't. It doesn't give you the APIs to do it. So we need some kind of mechanism to do it. The key features of Iceberg, open format for managing metadata, right? That's one of the big aspects that Iceberg brings is that it extracts the metadata from a catalog and it kind of moves that logic into files, right? So now you do have less dependence on a catalog to maintain schemas and partitions. You can handle that inside of the, the, the table format. So it's much more portable if you want to move it from cloud to on-prem, on-prem to cloud to different cloud uh, providers. Insert, update, and delete. Um, I think it's the obvious one. It's a big one that um, obviously you're going to be using. Asset transactions, be able to, you know, to update, insert, and delete data or query data within a transaction. Um, and we'll talk about some of the concurrency uh, controls and, and snapshot isolations and stuff like that. Schema evolution makes it really easy uh, because you're updating the table format itself, you're saying, hey, I want to add a column, remove a column, rename a column, rearrange a column. It's very easy to do because this whole handle, it's all of it is handled for you within the manifest, which we'll talk about in a minute. Dynamic partitioning. So traditionally with Hive tables, when you partition a table, kind of like group uh, similar rows together, you do it by physically creating folders in your object store or in your HDFS, and you put those relevant files inside those folders. But if your partition changes, if you wanna go from, uh, let's say year partitioning to year month day partitioning, now you gotta create new folders, rewrite your files, it's expensive. With Iceberg, all those partitions are actually managed for you through metadata, so you don't have to recreate files or copy data or, or recreate folders and things like that. Makes it a lot easier. Pluggable data store format. By default, we see Apache Parquet as being the file format, but Iceberg does support ORC and also Avro. Uh, in the future, I'll support other formats, but it's pluggable. So if you want to choose a different format, you can do that. Uh, and then you get a bunch of storage optimization. This is something that traditionally in the data lake, was much harder to do. So if you wanted to compact, like merge a bunch of small files into bigger files, in a data lake, there was no, there was no uh, predefined mechanism to do it. You had to write a Spark job or a transformation job that will do it for you. And then you had to deal with, you know, uh, um, you know, conflicts and commit problems and concurrency and stuff like that. And I've written many of those jobs in my past and it's not fun at all. Uh, but with Iceberg, you kind of get this, um, this implementation already out of the box, which makes it easier, less things for you to do.